Columbia's coffee growing axis covers five mountainous departments or regions west of the capital Bogota. The department of Quindío is the most visited and the hour-long ride from the airport was longer than the half-hour hop from Bogota. But the windy mountain roads, many of which are under construction, would have made the journey overland 10 hours or longer. We stayed in Salento, the primary tourist town of the region. Nestled in the central Colombian Andes Mountains, Salento was founded in 1842 and has a beautifully preserved, colorful 19th century charm. Our hotel on the west side of town was typically colorful and offered a gorgeous view every morning for breakfast. Our street had several other beautiful buildings. And one place where a friendly Venezuelan woman handmade fantastic empanadas. In 1830, Simon Bolivar, national hero of Colombia, passed through the area and ordered an upgrade of the main road. Political prisoners were relocated here to do the labor. After they completed their sentences, they were given land and became the town's first residents. The center of town, as in all Colombian towns and cities, is the Plaza de Bolivar. Called the Liberator of America, he is the father of independent Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, Panama, and Bolivia. The modern road was diverted around Salento, preserving the town's 19th century character. There are many restaurants on Plaza de Bolivar, about half of which are reasonably priced. And just a block off the plaza, Bamboo had good traditional food and a fantastic view. Fruit carts are also around with the traditional sour, salty, sweet, and slightly spicy snack from unripe mango strips. There's also plenty of shopping, especially along the Artisan Walking Street. The best overall in Salento for selection and prices, it does help to take your time and shop around. At the far end of the walking street, a steep climb takes you to Salento's Mirador, or viewpoint. A good workout, and the best view in town. Plaza de Bolivar is also the transit center of Salento, a hub for Willie's Jeeps, the main form of transport. There are daily, regular Jeeps to the nearby town of Finlandia for about two US dollars each way. The hour-long trip, especially the one road from Salento to the highway, is very windy. Take medicine if you're susceptible to motion sickness. One highlight of the road are lots of Cecropia trees, whose leaves reflect white in sunlight. The trip terminates, of course, in Finlandia's Bolivar Plaza, a smaller version of Salento's. Founded 35 years after Salento, Central Finlandia feels like a smaller Salento, with plenty of shops and restaurants and 19th century architecture. An impressive mirador sits on the edge of Central Finlandia with more Cecropia trees. The town's more famous mirador is about a 15 minute walk from the center through the route of master artisans where they specialize in weaving natural fibers into all kinds of wonderful shapes and patterns. The final climb ends before the wooden observation tower, which is undergoing a major renovation to allow night visitors. But even from the base, you get a great view of the valley and back at the town atop the next hill. On the back side of Salento's Mirador, you can see the Candillo River stretching east up into the Cocora Valley and the Andes Mountains. Cocora Valley National Park is about a half hour Willie's ride 
and it's best to start early if you plan on doing the full five to six hour hike. Even at the parking lot, before you even get on the trail, the vistas are impressive. Gazing over the renowned Candillo wax palms, the national tree and symbol of Colombia, standing up to 200 feet tall, you can see why the valley inspired the setting for the Casa Madrigal in Disney's Encanto. Encanto-themed souvenirs are available, of course. The first few kilometers of the trail are relatively easy, gradually rising a thousand feet along the side of the forested valley. Cerro Morogacho always in sight. The highest point in the trail, 2,000 feet above where we started, is the clearest view of the mountain, and the nature of the trail changes drastically here. Renting a horse is another option for touring Corcora Valley, one that a Vic took. She passed by a lower route, more through the middle of the valley, by the base of the wax palms, where she really got an appreciation for just how tall they were. Three hours into our hike, we had rapidly descended a thousand feet on a more rugged part of the trail. And it was time to ask, what about elevenses? Or onces, as they call it in Colombia, though it doesn't have to be at 11. A Vic had turned around and was finishing her ride by then. Her horse and guide were both fantastic. Her guide was also a pretty good photographer. The horse, not so much. Meanwhile, we had reached a stream, a tributary of the Quindío, which became part of the trail at times. The wildlife that we saw along the way, especially close to the water, was very cool and one of the best parts of the hike. Around Candillo, there are plenty of reminders that you're in the coffee region. Coffee plants arrived here in the 1800s, and Colombia is the third largest global producer after Brazil and Vietnam. Growing up in the 1970s and 80s United States, we all knew of Colombian coffee grown by Juan Valdez, the official symbol of Colombian coffee since the 1950s. From Salento, you can visit at least 13 coffee farms. The Ocaso Premium English Tour was recommended by our hotel. The farm has a hotel that overlooks the Candillo River Valley with coffee plants all around an option for staying in the countryside. The pre-tour waiting area was impressive, a great primer for all of the information we were going to receive. The tour started with a history and farming overview, then equipped with stylish collection baskets we were sent to hunt for ripe beans. Coffee is a difficult and fragile crop, taking five years from planting to producing fruit and highly susceptible to climate fluctuations and disease. It wasn't harvest season, so most of the beans were green. But we did find a few ripe ones.
Then we walked through the rest of the process from bean to bag. The end of the tour was a taste test to see if we could pick out the different roasting styles, which we were terrible at. But we enjoyed the honey roast the most and took home a souvenir, a fantastic way to cap off our incredible time in Colombia's coffee country. Mm -hmm.